Yeah, it does feel unreal. You know, I, I'm, I'm also a mother. So mm -hmm. like beyond that, like there's days where I hold my son and I'm doing these interviews for this film or just all these different things. And, and it's never, it's never not on my mind that these are all things that I would have not been able to do. I would have never experienced. I would have never had be part of my journey. And Honestly, no, like no. being purely lazy. Well, the last <laughs> couple of weekends I have to do that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah, take right? it in while you can. Yes. What do you got afterwards? You got something planned too and a coming up? Um, well, just the premiere next weekend happening. Okay. And then um, I'm gearing up and we'll be shipping out for my next film, which is really, really exciting. So wow. yeah. So Stuff's getting crazy over here in the Crocker household. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? You you want it's, you, work's happening. You're you're talking about your film. That's always good stuff, right? Exactly. It's literally like the best stuff. Are you kidding? Yeah. That's why I'm looking forward to this weekend, going it? <laughs> hey, take a breath. Watch some movies. I don't know if you're into Oscars. You can watch that. And then next week, it's it's all full steam ahead. Yep. Exactly fantastic wow you know not many people can say even in this industry you know uh, actors or whatever writers directors can say they kind of have a movie based on their own experience in life you know that's, that's a unique thing to be able to do and be actually show it to the masses you know do you still kind of pinch yourself that your story's being told, uh, you know, uh, kind of for a big audience and people who might be going through issues might be able to see that. And, and, you know, you get to tell your story too. That's the, that's a cool part about it, that you are the author of this film in a sense, in every essence. Yeah. I, and to answer your question, yes, I pinch myself every day. Like I, I, I really do. I feel so blessed every day, A, that I got to create this film and all of that, but B, that I'm here today, you know? on a on a on a deeper level so yes i in in all the ways i do i definitely do pinch myself i, I feel really lucky you know Ed, did you think while making this movie that not only this movie wouldn't have been made but you might not be around too like that that's that's a whole different kind of outlook on it too the mortality issue about like being close to to not being able to ever you know see this come through and and tell your story in a sense too when you look back at that stuff like how almost uh, you know un, un, unreal does it feel to you that you know you are at this point and you've gotten so far too on your own personal level yeah it does feel unreal you know i i'm i'm also a mother so mm -hmm. like beyond that like there's days where i hold my son and I'm doing these interviews for this film or just all these different things. And, and it's never, it's never not on my mind that these are all things that I would have not been able to do. I would have never experienced. I would have never had be part of my journey. And I honestly feel, you know, it depends on your stance on all of this, but I, I feel everything happens for a reason. And only now can I look back at my twenties and understand why I went through all of that, because if I hadn't gone through all of that and I hadn't survived, I would have never um, made continue. And I, in mental health advocacy and suicide prevention probably wouldn't be such a huge part of my life. Um, and I'm so grateful that it is. And that, you know, there are so many advocates and cheerleaders out there just trying to break the stigma and communicate about mental health and suicide prevention and depression and all of those things. And so, you know, every day I feel like I understand a little bit more of my journey and why my journey has been the way it is only through me seeing the things that I can actively change now today, because I went through all of those things, the people I can support and be there for, because I went through all of that, you know, and it's, what is that quote? You can't connect the dots looking forward, only looking back. Mm, 
That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to say who it was, but I think it was Steve Jobs, but I could be completely wrong. So don't call me. I haven't heard it. So this is, this is like a prophetic moment for me to even hear that, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense. You know, when you look back now, do you understand more the reasons why you, you got to that point of, of considering suicide, of being so close to, to ending it all? Do you kind of understand it now when you look back you know, more matured with a child on your 20s, what you were going through and what were some of the reasons, you know, do you justify it maybe more so now what you were thinking before? I think, I think that, I think some people genetically are more prone. And, you know, I, I like to say this joke a lot, um, but I'm Native American and Irish. So I think before I was born, some things were mapped out that were definitely going to be issues for me, you know, and <laughs> that's two and- interesting backgrounds right there, you know, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and alcoholism runs deep in my family and depression has always run deep in my family. And my grandfather took his own life from suicide. So I think that from a very young age, it was in front of me and I knew it was an option people take. And, um, and I saw depression around me, you know, from a very young age. And then, and then I started to have my own battles and, you know, I can look at a lot of the things and understand it a lot better. Um, I was, I, you know, I feel everyone always expected me to be something and be a certain way and wanted me to be a certain way and the pressures of that. And, you know, so many people had made me feel like the only thing I had of value was my looks or my this, which is, you know, inaccurate, but it also leaves you with this feeling of like, okay, well that's fleeting. So if that's all I have, then, then what, then what does this mean when it's gone? And what does that mean that, what value do I have? And, you know, just, there's just all of these things. And I think the number one thing that it all came down to is isolation. I felt alone and, and that is why I created this film because the more I talked about it, the more I told people about my experience, the more I performed these scenes in acting classes or, you know, all of these things, I started to realize how ununique I am, how many people have these same battles who have had these same struggles. No one really talks about it. And it's been like this hush hush thing. And, and, you know, when, because of that feeling, in the moment you can feel like, you know, I won't speak for other people, but I felt like kind of like a freak, like, oh, no one else feels this way. No one else. So something's wrong with me, you know? And, and now I realize that's completely inaccurate. And there are a lot of people and, and the stigma is being, you know, shattered every day. And we're all opening up these conversations in a much bigger way. And that's why I created continue because I wanted people to know they're not alone. And I wanted them to know that their life matters. You know, it's relevant too. you know, I can relate to, I think anyone can relate to it. You have bad patch. Like I, you know, myself, I've been going through a tough time lately. Like my mother just got diagnosed with cancer for the third time, you know, uh, financial issues, uh, career stuff, not going your way. And you naturally get down, you know, because you feel like life wants to just kick you in the ass and keep you down, you know, and um, watching this story, it's inspiring to see where you came from. Cause like tough times sometimes come and you just have no control over them, you know, but it's so important. Like you mentioned talking to people and, and having a support system, you know, and, and just not isolating this to yourself because your mind can wander in so many places and make you feel just completely worthless, you know? So, um, on a different scale, I can relate to this, you know, um, it just going through struggles and, Um, luckily for me, I have like a sister that's super supportive, a good friend to always talk to. And, you know, my mother's so strong third time, you know, two times she beat cancer. And now it's like, you know, you're inspired to feel that she's going to do it again. And you're hoping for that, but life is tough, you know, and it's understandable for, for so many people. So watching this movie just meant to me too, that, you know, seeing your struggle sort of being visually, you know, kind of, you can take it in. There's a different thing about that. And, um, you know, knowing that there's a light on the other side, it's, it's hopeful. You know, I think the one thing in life that, you know, it's important is hope. When you start losing hope, your life can spiral out of control. You know, hope is so important. And I feel like this movie was hopeful. So I appreciate you doing that too, you know, because even me watching, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm going through tough times, but it's, it's relatable, but you know, you know, that, 
eventually things get better. You know, I think that's the moral of it too. And you can change. If you just get through that tough time, things can look up. And as in your life, you know, you're look at you, you, you had a child, you're, you're now talking about a movie you made, which many creatives don't ever get a chance. And that's the cool part of it, that there's a success and victory at the light at the end of the tunnel too, you know, and, and that's really powerful. Thank you. I, I mean, honestly, everything you're saying, I honestly am getting like emotional just listening to you because I know that not everyone will see the hope in my film, but it is all about hope. It is all about putting one foot in front of the other and finding the strength on your hard days and knowing that everything could change tomorrow. Everything, yep. you know, it's like, and, and that hope is what we have to hang on to and that community and that, and, and communicating and, and all of those things. But like, you know, thank you for saying that because I do as hard as my film is probably, there's going to be people that it's painful to watch or that they, or maybe who can't relate because they've never felt that way. And that is why I wanted to make this movie because maybe if they could see that journey as well, the people who can't relate maybe is in the same way, maybe they can understand it a little bit better. Maybe they can empathize a little bit better, you know, and maybe then they can look at someone that they do know who suffers in a new way. Yeah. And like you mentioned, so many people do, this is a common thing, unfortunately, you know, but it's, it's just the way of the world. I'm glad that we get to talk about, have these conversations, you know, that used to be like, like you mentioned, and, and this, this progress has been happening recently, actually, you know, that's, which is a good thing, but, but, you know, I wish this was like 10, 20 years ago. There's so many lives could have been impacted and changed knowing that, you know, it's okay to talk about it. You're not a freak. You're not different. You know, normal looking people go through this stuff. Like people who you think like, have it all sometimes are going through struggles. You know, it's not the outside appearance, it's the inner thing, you know, and that's what's, that's what's kind of cool about your story that, you know, you projected all of your inner being onto this, you know, and um, that's really very kind of relatable in no matter, like you mentioned, any aspect you look at it, you can take something away and apply it, you know, as long as you're paying attention. Thank you for saying that. Cause like, that's, you know, that's all you can hope for as yeah. a filmmaker and as a creator, that's all I hope for is that people would see that, you know, that it's, you don't have to be someone who goes through depression to be able to find something in this film to relate to. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I love what you said too, about if this was 10 years ago, because, you know, I hope that people understand that stories like this have to have to exist yeah. and that we need to continue to create films like continue because this is something that we have to continue to have a conversation about. And, you know, that's one of the things too. It's like, as a human being, as a mother, as all of these things, it's like, it used to only, I think statistically, they said it was just middle-aged men. Um, that's not the case anymore. It's ages nine to like 25 are our, not, are our highest numbers in suicide. Now our youth is our highest numbers affected. And the age is getting younger and younger. I, recently read several articles about nine, like a, a couple nine-year-olds who took their own life. And that to me immediately, it's like, what the hell can I do? How do we change this? How do we make people see that this is not something that only affects like a certain small number of people? It is everybody, you know, there, there are people of all ages who are feeling this way. And they're, and they're not alone. Like there are so many of us and half of it, it's just, if they knew that everyone else was feeling that way too, maybe they could rest a little easier at night. Yeah. It's a relief. You know, even just talking about it, just bringing it out. It makes you feel kind of like, oh, you're unloading things. You know what I mean? That you, it, the worst thing you can do is keep things inside because that is not helping any situation. And it keeps on making the burden heavier. You know, when you just even let it out, someone just listens to you. You don't have to even say anything in return. You know, that makes a big difference. You know, at least in my case, well, like I like to be transparent whenever something's bothering me, I like to get it out because harboring things and it just doesn't help. And it just constantly reinforces stuff that might not even be true, you know, uh, adding to the, to the burden of it. So it's good to have these conversations and, and, you know, people opening up saying that they, they can relate. I think when you know someone can relate, it just makes you feel like you're safer, you know, in, in that sense. I can talk like only for me personally, but even just this conversation with you, like 
my heart feels a little bit more peace. It's like, see, if no one else connects, Jim did. He like, he gets it. And we're having this conversation, which is all I ever wanted to do was start a conversation to, to make a film that people would talk about after that, whether they were mad at me or loved it, they're talking and they're opening a conversation and they're leaving there communicating. And that's all I ever wanted. You know, I have chills as I'm saying this to you. And it's like, you couldn't be more correct. It's like, these conversations are what make us all feel like a little bit more okay at the end of the day. This conversation period will make me feel great for the rest of my day and weekend, you know, just being understood and knowing that someone sees you. Sometimes like all you need is to be seen. No question. Be seen and heard, you know, and I think that's, and, and the best kind of movies I always say is the one that make you think, reevaluate things or stay with you in some way, even if it's for a day or whatnot, because it makes an impact, you know, in that way, you just think about things and maybe, just even about a different perspective on things. And, and like this movie, that's definitely a conversation starter in, in every good reason, which is fantastic, you know, that you take away something from it, you know, and I, on the creative aspect of it, writing, directing, acting, and I, how difficult was that for you to, to kind of juggle all these things? Because I'd imagine like each job is difficult in a sense, but being so immersed in it, um, I feel like you probably couldn't tell the story if you weren't involved in every aspect of it, but like how, uh, was it difficult or was it easier that you had that input in every area? I wouldn't have done it any other way. I knew that, I knew that no one could champion this project the way I did. I, I invested my entire life savings. I raised every dime of the investment. I mean, of the financing, yeah. I found every member of our crew, our EPs, our casting director. I mean, I knew that no one would feel or exert the same amount of passion that, you know, I would. And I knew that I had to be involved in all of those different aspects. Now, was it easy? Hell no. It was no. so <laughs> difficult. It, you've seen my perform, like the performance and the material alone. It's really heavy stuff. Now put that in a very indie budget with not enough days, not enough dollars. Like, you know, like. Logistics come into play. You start worrying about, you know, instead of the performance only. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, like I didn't have a single lunch on the entire production because it was always putting out fires and the next day's problems and like all of these different things, you know? So it, yeah, it had its challenges at the same time. I wouldn't change a single thing about it because I believe my performance was even better. I believe, I believe all of those different things influenced each other. And because I was in the scenes, I could direct the actors in a different way. And if it wasn't working, if I didn't know exactly the right words, I figured it out through changing my tactics because I'm across for them. And, you know, it was just such an amazing, ex creative, like visceral experience. And yeah, sometimes I look back and I have no idea how I did it. <laughs> like, honestly, it's kind of like a lot of things in life. Like, yeah, I can imagine. like I got through it and at the same time, I think everything influenced the other and made everything else flow that way. I mean, the way that I was involved in the producing and, and the directing and all of that made all of the actors believe and trust in a totally different way. And because we had that relationship, then taking it to on screen, it was just already a chemistry and a relationship. It just, it all influenced the other. And I wouldn't have done it a single other way, but some days you're like, how the hell did I do that? <laughs> passion. You know? It's a passion project, you know? And, and the thing is, everyone there who was working on had to believe in it too, you know, because like you say, you're not getting big bucks here. You're doing this for the passion of the project, you know, literally everyone involved, which is kudos to everyone, you know, the actors and the crew and everyone, uh, you know, aside from you that helped out on it, because it takes a lot, you know, to, to bring a vision and create something like that. And, you know, sacrifices have to be made. And I think probably everyone uh, went in on it. Yeah. And, and the truth of it is, uh, you know, I always like to say, like, it was a family environment. It became a family environment because you can't know someone's story and their struggles and not like, you know, feel like, I don't know. I think just everyone could relate. And so many of the people who came to this project had attachments to, 
suicide, mental health in their family or in their own personal lives. And so everyone kind of had their own reason why they chose continue and they just poured everything they had. I mean, we were exhausted. We, we tried to make sure that this movie looked way larger than what we had. And we all gave everything we could. I mean, I, there's times where I still think back in my production designer, it was like asleep in the hallway on like during our lunch, just try, like we were exhausted and everyone gave a part of themselves. And, and I, I just, I don't know if every film's that way, but I just feel so damn lucky that my first film was because I want to take a piece of that with me to every film I ever create afterwards, that family dynamic, you know, it just, it was, it was a completely different experience. It meant something to everyone who was there. So they did whatever it took to make sure we got there. And, and without every member of my crew, of my team, of my collaborators, I couldn't have done it. I could not have wore 29 hats without no, amazing awesome. collaborators. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, but the, the, the key thing is you did it, you know, that's what, it, when you're looking back at it, the struggle, the, the overwhelming nature of it, I could only imagine thinking about it, which you have to, you know, make happen to get it to this point and make a movie look good. Like this one you did uh, also, it just, you did it, you know, and that's the thing that kind of, you can look back with major pride, you know, it's like people like to like, like to have ideas of doing something, but then actually executing and going for it. That's daunting and scary, you know? Uh, but when you get to this point, when it's completed, it's so rewarding and, and cool that you got through it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my, my grandfather, cause I just recently shared it with my grandparents and they, he was like, man, like, I just can't even believe it. Did you ever think you could do it? And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty much the only one who knew I could. And yeah. I, and that is what pushed me every day. I, you know, I knew I could do it and I believed every day. And that's the key. It's like, you have to believe and you have to do the work and you have to put one foot in front of the other. And then you have to convince a bunch of other people that you can too, you know? And it's like, and it all starts with that belief, you know? I loved how raw and authentic and bold you are. I knew you were bold already on Cabin Fever when, when you came out in the bloody boobs, okay, and everything. <laughs> you know, that's that's bold right there. You know, I'm like, that takes a certain actress with guts <laughs> to do and, and just like go for it. It was one of the memorable scenes. I mean, I still remember it. Well, Thank but you. so it's just so cool uh, to see you evolve, you know, and, and get to this point where you're creating such passion project, but, but be transparent in your experience, you know, because that's one thing that you cannot fake is your experience and emotions. And this movie really comes through as authentic and, and raw. And that's what makes it so appealing and relatable is when, when you see real recognizes real, right? So when you see authenticity and, genuine kind of you know being able to let go which you know it's it's tough to just open up completely and and you know give all of yourself out there and you did that and it's just tremendous you know I'm proud of your work what you've done and it's really cool I'm excited for your future too to <laughs> see what you're going to do more but I feel like after doing this uh, there's no doubt you're going to keep that authenticity and rawness in whatever you do I feel like Thank you. You're literally making me emotional. That's the second time I've almost cried because like, you know, you have no idea what that means to me and, and thank you. And yeah, it's, I, I I've said this for a really long time is all I can be is me. That's all I know how to be. And people are either going to relate with that or they aren't. And I'm, I'm not going to get every person, you know, you can, fine. it's impossible to be loved by every person. It's impossible yeah. to make a movie that every person likes. And I wouldn't want a movie. That sounds very- That's what I always say. Would I you would really want- hate. I want to be hated by some people. Yes, because that means you're not authentic. Because it means if you are like literally, uh, you know, appeasing everyone, there's something off here, you know, because naturally for whatever pre reason, people will just sometimes not vibe with you or not agree with you. So when you're appeasing everyone, I'm like, oh, I'm skeptical of that. But you know, when you let it out there and you, cause you know what the easiest thing at the end of the day, people sometimes overlook is being you. That's the only thing you control. It's like, you know, I don't have to be someone else. I, it's easy being me, you know, but if I can look in a mirror and say I was true and honest to myself, I'm content and, and I'm okay with that. You're speaking my language. You couldn't be, you couldn't be saying anything true to me. Like that's what I constantly say. Like when people are like, oh, how nervous are you? Cause I, 
you know, I'm very excited for my next project, but it's with some of the people that I've loved and looked up to for a very long time. And like, you know, people are like, how do you go into those meetings? I'm like, I, as me, that is, there's literally nothing else I could do. I have no interest in playing it cool. Yeah. So I'm just going to be me show my heart. And they're either going to relate or they're not, like I said, and they're either going to choose to do it or they aren't. And if they don't, great, I'll find my people. Like, that's the truth of it all is you can't change who you are to try and appeal. It's just, that's impossible to keep up. Like, it's exhausting to just think to about it. Can you imagine that? Some people, well, you know, the industry, you know, LA, there's a lot of people who come there trying to be something they're not just to, you know, have everyone love them. And it's like, you lose your way quickly that way. You know, it just- My 20s. Uh, that is my 20s. You want to know why I was suicidally depressed? I was trying to be what everyone else wanted to me. To it's be. impossible. It's impossible to live up to such a standard, you know? Exactly. And it's so much more, you know, you can take a breath and it's not exhausting. It's comfortable being in your own skin and you're certainly comfortable in your own skin. So I can relate on that. Thank you. This was awesome, Nadine. I, I It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I'm really thankful that you put out that story, you know, it impacted me in a certain way too, you know, and especially, I think this movie was at a, came at a good time for me too, personally dealing recently with all I have and, and just like, okay, you know, she got through it. I can get through it too. You know, that sort of thing, you know, bad, bad times don't last forever. You know, you need to keep on telling yourself that and there's always a light, even if you don't feel it or see it, it is there, you know, I mean, and look at the last two years we've had, like, yeah, true there's no way that it's just you and me who are feeling that way right now. Right. Like there's so many people. And, and I just keep saying, like, imagine making this entire passion project. And right. As you're like, oh, man, I've got to share it with the world. COVID hits and yeah. the world like closes and everyone feels so dark. And, and it's just like, everything happens exactly when it's meant to, you know? And I feel like hopefully this film can help some people to feel the way you and I do when we watch it and, and to feel, see themselves a little bit in it and that it, it came, comes to them in the exact right time too. Cause I know that we're not the only people that have been feeling that way in the last couple of years, you know? No question. I think it will. Awesome job. I mean, as beautiful as you are physically, that <laughs> inner beauty supersedes it. I, I really feel it too. You have a beautiful soul and spirit. And, and I love that, that you do things with passion and uh, that you're here, you know, because look at how many lives can get to be impacted, uh, you know, and, and you kept on going and it, it's going to make a world difference now and, and going forward. So fantastic. So much. Thank you. Can't wait to connect with you again. I need to talk to you on the next project. I want to hear. I know. I was like, Jim, we, we need to talk a lot more. I feel like you yeah. and I need to have like probably like a couple months, every couple months we have some kind of conversation because yes, I need more of you in my life. <laughs> hey, me too. I, I, we're very similar personalities. I feel like in that way too, which is so rare kind of in today's world, but it, it's great to know. Uh, so yeah, I'll be connecting with you, uh, hopefully on social media or whatnot and, and stay in touch because I, I can't wait to hear more. Uh, what's in store for you. Okay. Well, good. I can't wait. <laughs> thank you, Nadine. Thank you have a great one. Enjoy this weekend and have fun next week um, because oh, you. your baby's coming to the world. Oh, Woo, all those <laughs> butterflies just started, but I can't wait. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.